Hi, this is Simplify Concepts and I am Dr. Shuchi. This is a series of three video lectures where we will discuss those journal entries where students generally commit a mistake and do not have conceptual clarity. So this is the second lecture in this series. Let's get started. Meet him. He is our cute little Bholu and he has brought for us some tips. So the first tip is purchase return is also known as return outward. Sales return is also known as return inward. Thank you so much Polu for these tips. Now let's move forward towards the common mistake which is done with regards to depreciation. Depreciation is basically charged on fixed assets like uh, furniture, plant and machinery, building etc. It is not charged on land. It is not charged on land. Depreciation is a kind of loss. So therefore, it, will, it is always written on the debit side. So the journal entry will be depreciation account debit to the asset account. Now we move on to the second common mistake which is done with regards to discount. Discount can be of two types, trade discount and cash discount. What is trade discount? Trade discount is basically given by the seller to the traders. Traders are the people who purchase the goods and then sell it out for a profit. Then trade discount is given at the time of preparing the sales invoice, the sales bill. It is subtracted from the list price, please remember. And the purpose of giving trade discount is to increase the sales. And this trade discount is never shown in the journal entries. Then we have cash discount. Cash discount is basically provided by the seller to the buyer and it is always given at the time of making a payment. So the basic purpose of giving cash discount is to get early payment. So if you want your customers to pay early, in that case, we offer them cash discount. And remember, this cash discount is always shown in the journal entry. Now again, our Bolu is here. What happened, Bolu? Oh, you want an example? Okay, there we go. Purchase goods for $20,000 for cash at a trade discount of 20% and cash discount of 10%. Okay, so in this case, the list price is $20,000 on which 20% trade discount will be subtracted. So 20% of $20,000 will be $4,000. We will subtract it and the value will be $16,000. So purchase invoice will be prepared with 16,000 rupees. Then a further cash discount of 10% will be calculated on 16,000. It will be 1,600 and then the final value will be 14,400. So now the journal entry will be purchase account debit to cash account to discount received account. Now what amount will be mentioned here? So when we mention the particular amount in this case, then 16,000 will be written in purchase account debit. Then the discount amount that is 1600 will be written in the discount received account and the remaining 14,400 will be written in the cash account. Now one more interesting fact here, this cash and discount they are just like twin towers which are inseparable. So always cash and discount either both of them in the journal entries they will be written on the debit side or both of them will be written on the credit side. Now let me just tell you another important fact related to discount that is full settlement. Whenever the word full settlement is there, always remember that means there is some element of discount. See this example, paid Rohan $900 in full settlement of $950. That means instead of $950, we will pay $900 to Rohan and this difference $550 will be termed as discount and we are not going to pay him anymore this 50 in future. Next we'll talk about transfer to fixed deposit. Now before understanding this concept, let us just focus upon that whenever you start a new business, we always open a, an account in the bank. So whatever account is opened in the bank, that bank account is always referred to as the current account. So if you call current account or bank account, they are same. 
they are not different so if you deposit from your current account if you deposit some money in your fixed deposit account then what will happen see in this example transferred 100 dollars from current account to fixed deposit account so what will be the journal entry money is coming in to your fixed deposit account so therefore fixed deposit account will be debited by 100 dollars and to bank account 100 dollars so why bank account is credited because it is the money is going out of it and it is used in place of current account then in the last we have prepaid and outstanding expenses now let's understand about first the prepaid expenses prepaid expenses means expenses which are paid in advance and if you pay in advance then obviously it means that they are related to the next year so if you anything if you pay in advance that is always your asset and please remember that assets whenever your assets are increasing we always write them on the debit side so therefore in the journal entry prepaid expenses account is debited to expense account now we talk about the outstanding expenses outstanding expenses are basically those expenses which are due but we could not pay them because of some reason we have to pay them but we have not paid them so they are related to the current year but we have not paid them so they are our liability and always remember that liabilities whenever your liabilities increases we always write them on the credit side so the entry will be expense account debit to outstanding expenses account what happened bolu oh you want to know why expense is credited okay so then just recall the uh, the rule debit all expenses and losses so in this case always remember that if you debit the expenses and losses they will always increase and if you write them on the credit side they will decrease so in this case what is happening that if any expense now this is the thumb rule of accounting that if any expense is related to current year then it is always added and if it is related to next year it is always subtracted so in this case prepaid expense is related to next year so therefore it has to be subtracted and for subtracting we need to credit the expense account so i think you got it now okay bolu now we come to the outstanding expense account now in this case why expense is written on the debit side please remember as i told you that outstanding expenses are related to current year so they are added to the expenses and therefore if we want to add to the expenses so we need to write expenses on the debit side because if your expenses increases we write them on the debit side so here we come on the apply your brain section and here you have two transactions related to which you can write the journal entries if you have understood the video completely so first one is paid to arun rupees 490 in full settlement of rupees 500 and the second one is amount transferred to fixed deposit rupees 1000 so you can write the transactions these journal entries in the comment section or you can mail to us okay see you in the third lecture of this series thank you so much bye bye